y'all. It's Hope at Crafty Hope and welcome to my contribution for Ina Salisbury's four core project. Now this involves using four core ingredients and for this month of March, um, we're just used a paintbrush, two identical things, a movable part, there's my movable part, and a color splash, which is the bead. So I've got the paintbrush, the movable part, the color splash, and in that mix of things, I thought I was going to use those two big filigree pieces as my identical things, but I ended up using um, a couple other things that were identical in this. So, um, we're going to start with this paintbrush. And I am starting by, and I've seen Ina do this, which is put down some tissue paper on something that she doesn't think either the items or the paint will stick to. So I decided to do the same thing since the top of this paintbrush is plastic. And you know, I don't know where this paintbrush came from. I've got a box of things for mixed media and assemblage that I pulled it out of and was like, that's what I'm gonna use for this. Now, Ina has been doing this four core project for several years. I just discovered it and I am so excited about it because I am doing assemblage for my 100 day project. So this kind of gave me a little bit of a prompt of something to do for my 100 day project. This video, I'm going to rush through some of these parts because it's a lot of the same thing. Like here, I'm just using Mod Podge to put this down. But I did clip over to this part so you could see how I just kind of stuffed that tissue paper into that open hole at the top because I knew I wanted to use that to help hang this at the end. Now it hanging is also part of the reason I do not use both of those filigree pieces because I decide not to decorate the back side of this so it doesn't have a whole lot of texture to keep it off the wall. So once I let that all that tissue paper and Mod Podge dry, I'm coming straight in with my E6000 and my little bits of jewelry. So there's that filigree piece and I'm sticking it down and let's see in addition there's a lot of broken jewelry in this I have I am a jewelry maker and I love to upcycle things so I have taken old jewelry and taken it apart and I separate the things that I think I can use in more jewelry with the things that I can't so a lot of these are the things I can't use in my jewelry all right, those two little pieces there are identical, so that's two of my two identical things. But I also have these little plastic petals that came off some clip-on earrings. They were big flower earrings, and they were already broken. I found them mixed in with some other stuff, and I was like, huh, those could be interesting. And the texture of them, y'all, really does add so much to this. So I'm just going to go through and add bits and pieces of these jewelry things on here. I wanted those kind of bulkier pieces on the side. So what I used was a little clip. Um, that's a chip clip, I think, but you could use a paper clip or a binder clip or something just to hold up your paintbrush or whatever you're using to get it to be on its side. So nothing slides because that E6000 will slide. And that once it was dry, I just flipped it over and did the same thing on the other side. Like I said, I cut this video way down. It was over an hour long. And I kind of just kept what I thought y'all needed to see. Now for more texture, I'm using this, I don't even, it's like floral. It's in the floral department of the Dollar Tree. And it comes in like a whole sheet on this sticky and I've never used this before. I think I have seen Ina use this maybe or somebody else that was doing some assemblage. But I'm just gonna cut off um, a strip of two of the little things and pick a couple places to stick down these like pearl, I don't know. I don't know what, what to call this, the stick on stuff. So I'm gonna yeah, wrap that around the brush there. And like I said, I'm not going all the way around to the back because if it hangs, you'll never see it. So I'm going to put some on the sides and around toward the, the bristles of it. And then I've got these are also from the Dollar Tree and they are just stick on pearls. So I'm going to put them, they're a little bit larger than those floral ones I was using. So I'm going to stick those in a couple places too. Again, cutting down what I need. 
And these add so much texture to this too. Um, that was the whole thing for me. I wanted to just make sure I had lots of texture on here. All right, once all of those little bits and bobs are stuck down, I have pulled out the black gesso and I'm going to paint this whole thing. But before I do, I decide to protect my bristles because I really wanted to keep that natural color of them. So I've just got some masking tape. A painter's tape would work too, but the masking tape was close by. And I'm just marking those off so that I can paint the rest of this with my gesso. And y'all, I'm just going to slather it over the whole thing. I do come back. I don't even remember how many layers I did here. It was at least two, if not three. And I did use a smaller paintbrush for some parts of it to make sure I got into some of the nooks and crannies, like behind and under the those little rhinestones. I do kind of wish I had stuck down some of those rhinestones with the E6000. I had one of them that kept popping up. I think I finally have it stuck down. Now this is some Gilder's paste and the color is patina and it has dried. It used to be a paste. It's dried into kind of a cakey form and I'm using just a little bit of mineral spirits. I've got them. Um, I've got a big jug of it and I've put it in a little jar just to make it easier to use on my desk. And so I'm just putting that mineral spirits on my paintbrush and then putting that onto that hard cake of the Gilder's paste. And I just wanted this to feel like it had a patina to it. So that's why I'm using this color. And just brushing over kind of all of the brush. Not, not all of them. And see, this is going to be confusing. So all of the brush that I'm altering. My big paintbrush. How about that? Just to get some of the texture of things. And I'm focusing a lot more on the pieces I added then on the um, like there there's a little bit of texture in the tissue paper that I added but for the most part I really want to get the texture of the broken jewelry and the little pearls that we added and all of that and I'm keeping this in here for a little bit because this aging and antiquing and adding of the color is probably one of my favorite parts of when I do the assemblages like this because it picks up all that texture that we added. The gluing down things is nothing, but getting that texture is really the, the fun of it where you, you bring those things back out and they just pop in. Yeah, I love it. And I don't use anything special when I brush. I found that I really do like a flat brush for some of this. But in a second, I'm going to add something else. And I'm going to use a really cheap. I don't even know that you. It's not a round brush. I don't know. So here's a look real quick at how that looks with the patina on it. And I'm going to come back in with this Art C. It's some kind of wax in a silver color. And you can see that paintbrush I'm using there is... It's a kid's brush for something. It's, I don't even know, but it's, it's bristly and big and it worked perfect with this because I wanted something a little more spaced out to pick up some more of the texture. Now I'm going with a silver for this because the movable part that I'm adding is a little bead capture thing you'll see it again in a minute and it is silver um, but it is a shiny shiny silver and I'm gonna try to alter it so here's a look at that um, now I'm gonna go ahead and peel off that masking tape uh, yeah trying not to take any of my bristles with it and there's that shiny shiny bead capture ball thing and I decided to use some rub and buff in oh what's the color it is ebony I think and it is also hardened so I'm using my mineral spirits here too and brushing over this whole um I don't even know this whole bead ball thing and it is movable in that it opens and closes it has a little hinge on it but I'm also going to hang it on the paintbrush so it will move there as well so I do darken this some I don't know I don't know if it was because I used the mineral spirits or whatever there's a look at how dark it got I think in my use of it I took off some of that rub and buff yeah see <laughs> all right 
um, somehow my camera wasn't recording, but I just wrapped a piece of gunmetal chain around the neck of that paintbrush and um, closed it with a jump ring. And now I'm using another jump ring to attach the ball that's got this red bead in it. Now the red bead is my pop of color or my splash of a contrasting color that Ina asked us to use. And so I thought that was kind of perfect just like that. So I attached that with the jump ring and I'm going to also use um, another length of that chain to go through the top here. The jewelry piece I put up there at the top is curved and so it has a little bit of an opening and I did that on purpose so I could put this chain through it to the actual whole part of the paintbrush handle and I kind of just measured out how much I wanted and I'm clipping the chain. I'm gonna grab another jump ring out of my stash and I'll just use my pliers to twist that open and connect the two ends of that chain together to complete it. And that will be how this um, chain or how this paintbrush hangs is from that jump ring or from that chain. And give me a second here. Now I'm also going to add a dab of E6000 to the chain on the back of my little bobble to keep it from sliding around on the back of the paintbrush. You'll see that here in a second. And that's going to be it for this. This is my hashtag for core for Ina Salisbury. I want to thank Ina for this fun challenge. I'm so excited to have found an assemblage art challenge. And I'm looking forward to participating next month. If you're interested in seeing more of the assemblage art I've done, I'm doing hashtag assemblage100 on Instagram for my 100 day project. And so let me know too if y'all have any questions about this or anything else I'm creating. And make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this from me. And I really appreciate you taking the time to come by and watch what I've done. It really means the world. So here's where I'm adding, y'all. That is just a touch of a 6,000 on the back of that chain. Like I said, it's on the back. It doesn't matter. I left that to dry. And here's some pictures of how this turned out. All right, y'all. Thanks for coming by and watching. Bye. Bye.